Hi guys, my name is Darren Ambrose. Um, welcome to my tutorial and uh, we're working on a concept uh, which is Sebman for Weller and um, also Hair Tribe, which is amazing. Great to be here and we're going to create this look for you. So it's taking kind of concepts uh, for guys into a new realm or revisiting and using techniques that will just personalize a haircut. All different avenues and the great thing about guys hair now is it's really diverse so anything goes, thank God. So let's just have a look at how we achieve this and create something a little bit more um, unique for the male grooming audience. <laughs> Hi guys, okay, today we're gonna to look at male grooming. Right on the market, there's so many changes, ever evolving for guys, thank God. Okay, so apart from the amazing barbershop kind of techniques and the fades and the crops and the beard control that we're seeing now, like we all wear as guys, um, we're doing things that are a little bit alternative for men as well. If you look at Fashion Week, Men's Fashion Week, things have really evolved and it's amazing. So we're taking a different slant. So if you're thinking of entering, you know, the trend vision, male grooming, or anything to do with guys, like wherever you're working, it's kind of feeling something different. So we're gonna be using a technique that's kind of retro, the, the old razor, bringing that back in for authenticity and creating texture within the hair. So it's more hair language and tactile. So you can actually use your fingers to do more of the styling on guys rather than using artificial forced involvement. Um, so as you can see with Matt at the moment, I've just kind of slicked this back, okay? Matt was also um, kind of like a dark brown before we started, we've pre-bleached him. And what I'm using to cut is a Perfecton in a water spray so that as I'm cutting, I'm toning as well. And this is really cool to build up it from a color concept like a really good sort of uh, kind of technique sort of when you're building up the color tone. So you can add more or less. Um, so let's crack on with what we're doing. I'm gonna keep some of this length in the back or all of this length in the back because we love, but we're gonna just start to reduce some of the weight line and bulk within the back section. So starting with a crown parting, C curvature, like so. Okay, just working this across the head. This is just to keep your sectioning and the haircut pretty clean, okay, while you're, while you're working through. Matt's hair is pretty straight, so we can see that the texture's already in there. So if he just tilts his head back slightly, you can see you're working across the half section and then down center to nape. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna block off where we've got the weight already. Because as you know, with a, with a, with a razor, um, you take away a lot of hair sort of straight away. So we wanna keep some of that weight in the baseline. So working across above occipital, like so. Okay, we're just gonna isolate that hair and then move on to the razor. And then what we're gonna do from the parting is work across on diagonals. Okay, like so. We just tilt head over. Okay, just spinning around there. You can probably see that then. And then we're gonna use the, like, the flat blade work from about half an inch down, start the flat blading, and you're just gonna soften off the edges, like so, okay? Work on second section. Same applies. Okay, and then work on opposite side, combing into the middle. Same applies. OK, 
okay and then back over to this side back over to this so basically you're working in like a herringbone effect through the crown area okay just to create a looser texture on the ends where the hair's been sort of more precision cut or blunt cut. So it's creating a little bit more lucidity in the haircut itself. That's the great thing about a razor. Instantly, you start to get sort of a softer vibe to the hair and connection. Okay, working on the outer rim. Again, pull him right back, spin him round. Okay, and then round this side. Okay, like so. Just gonna work around to the side areas here. Okay guys, we're gonna just go on to temple area, comb down. Now, all this outer shape is cool here, okay? But we're just gonna take some of the length in, so invert. So razor in where you've got the shortest point. Connect in. Okay, shortest point, connect in. So you can see you're getting an invert, keeping the weight through here, but taking a little bit of the weight in at the temple area. So we've got more connection. And then what we love through the front is still this weight line through here. So we'll leave some of this to form the shape. What's cool about here is where you've taken the razor in, begins if you use your fingers and just manipulate the hair, you get that cool like animalistic vibe to it, which is a little bit more of the hair language. You can use your fingers to create. Just changing <clears throat> Scissor technique, okay? We're going into the classic texturizers. Just going in on the temple. This is where you keep or retain a little bit of the weight. And just taking a little of that away, just to soften as well. Okay, back onto razor going towards the top of the temple. Now, again, connecting in. Working on to the other side. Okay, we're gonna work now through this top middle section through here. Okay, and we're just gonna cut across top here. And again, flat blade through. And when Matt's hair, it's really thick, especially through the top. It retains a lot of weight. So it's kind of a cool one to use the authenticity of the razor. 
because it works really nicely with the hair and also the look that you're creating. So it can, uh, can be a good thing. So I'm going to cut across on a diagonal. Okay, work that through. Same with this diagonal. doing is just connecting some of the lengths through the top here so we've got more unity um, it's not so kind of uh, cut into you know you've got a little bit more solidness even though you're using the razor it's going to thin it out but you've got a little bit more kind of uh, connection between the layer and the lengths Okay, so you're just working down towards the fringe area on a... This? On your angles, on your diagonal angles. Okay, and then we want to just comb that. into place. Working then on two precision scissors. Just going to lift some of this fringe just so that it just breaks up a little bit more. And if we tip the head back, okay, right back, and then use your scissors to point cut up. So it just creates more of a self-cut kind of vibe through the front. Okay, through the sides, just take off the ends as so. Just to create a form of bluntness and then when you go back onto texturizers and I'm going to work again through the top section working on diagonals working forward and this is again to create another added texture and looseness to the hair so, the more we put in here, the more you can use your fingers to actually manipulate and give him movement, even though the hair is quite straight. You'll see when it's kind of finished, when we've used in the, uh, the products <clears throat> and stuff like that, it's really cool because you can really get your, your hands in there and create a texture and create an image. All, the list, all of this length is great and it works. Just gonna lift up and texturize those ends through. And this is a great thing about um, achieving a look, okay? Sometimes when you're working on um, kind of model, client, guys, whatever, you know? You don't, it's, it's sometimes not about massive, massive, massive changes. It's about personalization. So everybody is a character, a persona, but they want to be something different. So by utilizing your techniques, you can go into pockets of the haircut that will just personalize it. Um, so even though we're keeping the length and everything, and it's not massive, like cropping off or, you know, shaving the hair, it's actually giving a um, strong image in the right direction and the right areas that you need to. So it's creating a different look in the long run. And that's the cool thing about it too. Um, and keeping it kind of real, you know, like real hair, real movement and a bit of a vibe. 
that's a bit cooler. Let's just shake that out. And then what we want to do, using this guy, which is the water spray, I'm just going to take into the root, which is a little bit more of that coloration, and just darken it down. So the ends have got a kind of grey tinge to them, where it's bleached, it's more kind of ashy. But then the root starts to get dirty like it's more ash base, which I think is really cool. So you've got that kind of masculine coloration, um, but it's introducing guys to color too, as well as kind of longer hair and different formations to it. Take it a little bit more off of here. So really we're working with visual concept through the haircut it's kind of pretty straightforward in a sense of you're leaving the perimeter area long and then from occipital bone to the front we're taking in shorter so it's got that real sort of 70s retro vibe to it and then it's just kind of working the character in the hair and for the guy What I love about this is when you're working it, if I turn him around, okay, and you use your fingers to manipulate, flatten out when needed, and then use them to turn it. If you let this dry naturally, it's really cool. Um, with the aid of a product, you could put in there a mousse or a kind of light gel or anything like that, but you just get this really nice, kind of worked in, almost like when you sleep on it, it looks much better, you know? It's a really nice kind of vibe to it. And as you can see through the back, you've got the elongation, so we've still got the length, raise it in around the occipital, up to the crown, and using the coloration, the color's great, because when you bleach the hair anyway, it's got good substance. Um, and then using the watercolor, you can just work it in, so you get these really kind of random pockets, which I think looks really cool as well. It's a bit obscure, so it's nice, good. Okay guys, so to recap, uh, with Matt's hair now, we've finished um, the end result using Sedman. We used a light gel to build up a kind of structure in the hair that's got a little bit more support, and then using a matte clay to finish on the palms of the hand, just shoe shining across and basically just dried it using the fingers to get texture in the hair. So there's no brushes, nothing used on this. It was just kind of using his real texture and natural texture and your fingers. So you're the craftsman kind of dealing with the texture in the finished result. It's got a bit of a homage to Gucci come kind of that kind of retroism really, like I was saying, like the 70s thing, which has taken you back to your tools, which is the razor cut. So if I just turn Matt round a little bit, you can see by using the razor, you're giving that authenticity through the haircut. You've got elongation, you've still got weight lines where you need it, and you've still got the texture where you need it. And um, just to kind of run it through, so using your fingers like so, keeping the weight on the front. And as you can see, by point cutting into the fringe, you've got this kind of cool little uh, kind of textural, sort of beatniky vibe to it, and then the texture through the top. Using the colour in the hair, we've created the pockets of different tone, which I think for guys on the street looks really cool. It kind of takes it down to more mousy, ash, matte, sludgy, um, but kind of really cool and wearable. And as you wash it, it kind of comes off gradually. So you get different tonal effects on that as well, which is really effective. Hope you like it, guys and uh, finished result.